Okay, so we're playing against the uh, stockfish level 1500 ish Amazing. in preparation for the OTB tournaments. Again, they're going for this um, Fianchetto thing. We're playing as black this time. Okay, just open up in the center and support the pawn. Just keep it simple. Got to really get into the psyche of the game. That last game was really interesting because they it it felt like I was playing a human, which was really good. But we I think we have to go deep into our oops sorry yoga. Um, we have to go deep into the calculation. Well, for myself anyway, and try and find the better positions. So it's opening up the bishop, maybe coming out here to get rid of this knight that's supporting the pawn. So let's see if we can go and castle, get the bit, yeah he's doing that, so we'll bring the pawn here supporting. We don't need to move that fast, the, the, this computer just whips out the moves. In reality, as we know, um, real life players take a lot longer. You know, So it is a 90 minute, 10 second game, this next tournament that we, fingers crossed, we can attend. And I'm just going to stick with what we know, which is basically going for the castling aspect. It is quite frightening playing a computer, I mean, because you know, they, they can see some very strange things, but I think castling should be okay, shouldn't it? We don't mind doubling the pawns here. And just because I am playing a computer, I really don't want to play any differently as to how I would normally. You know, because I'm just looking at this going, oh, maybe I bring the bishop here and stuff, but I don't want to lose tempo. I'm actually just going to go and castle. So my king feels a bit safe. Now the knight's out. It does have championing of this square. If he does take with the bishop, we take there. So they've kind of allowed us to develop our white square bishop out. In any event, even if I do go here, I'm not actually going to take with the bishop anyway. So I'm just going to get the bishop off the... Just have a look at this. And this is the type of stuff that happens when I'm playing over the board as well. I then try and... I think, oh, he's going to start pushing down here. If I bring my bishop here, he's going to push his pawn down. Then my knight doesn't have anywhere to go. But it, it can come back here. And his plus is weakening his kingside area if he does do that. Or she, whichever. So I'm going to bring the bishop out. So bishop's moved back. I mean, we would probably chase the bishop because we do like to um, open this pawn here I know it's doubling the pawns but that is what we're used to doing he's moved the same piece twice has it lost in tempo we go here when the knight is there usually the knight just jumps in and sinks itself into here so I'm sticking with what I do at this moment in time for this type of opening so they've actually castled, so I think we're just going to take this uh, bishop off the board. Kind of doubles their pot. Ah, oh, okay, so they're not taking the bishop. This is the kind of humanised aspect, isn't it? I mean, the last game uh, didn't do like a, a massive drop like this. But these things can happen in games. Okay, so I bring the bishop back, straightforward, yes, just thinking am I falling into a trap, I, I think we just keep it safe and bring it back, <clears throat> just bring it back, so we're up a minor piece at the moment, computer's now jamming in the centre a little bit, we could look to attack this pawn, because we have the knight, we have the bishop and we have the queen on there, he just has a pawn and a knight. But then what he does have with the stealth bishop again is a two on one here on this pawn with his knight and his bishop. <clears throat> so if 
<coughs> excuse me, if we push, it might take or it might just ignore it altogether. Or he might just take with the knight, knowing that he's got a two on one on this pawn. Is that putting him in a better position and is he winning then a minor piece back after all that? I kind of don't want them to get the minor piece back, but sometimes there's set players in the way by they do end up getting the piece back. I'm still plumping for this. Like I say, if the knight takes. Because he's got the diagonal on here. The knight takes, we take back with our knight. His pawn takes, is on our knight, which is protecting this pawn. Hmm. Well, maybe we don't do this attack then because it seems to be creating something for them which is more beneficial than it seems for us. Up. Knight takes the pawn. Knight takes the knight. Knight takes the pawn, knight takes the pawn, bishop takes the bishop takes the knight. I think we're still up there, aren't we? We're still up. Yep. And if you're getting fed up with my calculations, eh, um, I've got my own little psychology going, which is um, check the calculation that you calculated to make sure that the calculation that I calculated was the correct calculation so I'm just constantly checking it might look simple to other people who are looking at it and going oh simple why don't you just do this that and the other but for me um, I'm just training I make trying to make sure that I'm get I've, I'm up material here but it could easily be lost if I don't do it right. I think it is this pawn pushing here. I'm going to push. So the knight does take. So like we said I'm just going to take the knight. And I suppose his knight takes up. So he's actually on two pieces. So the queen could take to support. If the queen does this though. His pawn comes down here. And attacks our queen. So we might have just resigned ourselves to the fact that we're losing that pawn, in a sense. I don't think we need to go too crazy, do we? So if we take with the bishop... We're just going to take with the bishop, keep it simple. Well, okay. So they're allowing us to bring our bishop in, but it's still not enough pieces to actually protect. Because now he's got three pieces on there. He's got the knight and he's got the bishop as well. So the only thing that comes to my mind is actually pushing the pawn up onto the knight and the pawn. And then the pawn takes. Mm, no, maybe not. Maybe not. Just let the pawn go or just push this pawn here to protect. It's got a dark square bishop, so the diagonal shouldn't impact us too much, but they're looking to get their minor piece back. Is there some sort of fork business going on? I mean, this is potentially coming in. I think a smaller piece defending. Maybe the, maybe the bishop even as well. It's just if the bishop comes then he's definitely just coming down and taking with the um, knight or the bishop. Whereas if it's a smaller piece, then we get compensated so I'm gonna go with the pawn supporting the pawn here so that was always coming so it looks like we can afford to trade down by actually taking his knight I'd prefer if we could um, get the pawns doubled 
but his queen is going to be taking so it's going to be elevated in this position it's the scores on the doors I think we can afford to trade down I'm actually taking so it's invited the queen so we could actually attack the queen with a smaller piece which is the knight we have to be mindful if the bishop takes we are probably going to have to take with the queen even though the queen is supporting the bishop if the pawn did take I think it's probably better taking back I don't think they're going to take though it's going to bring the knight across and attack the higher piece <clears throat> he's right in front of our king that is not really what we really want is it but we do have the knight coming here putting a fork on the rook so again it looks like we're going to be up the exchange a bit like the last game in a sense so I think we can just jump the knight in here what's his magic we go here then he does does he do some fancy bishop take pawn take rook take he's got a space here for putting a check on with his queen hasn't he and the knight's currently guarding that spot so if we jump here attacking the rooks we're still going to potentially be able to grab them but he can come here and put a check to win some tempo our bishop's protected the king just simply has to move out of the way uh, is that right? yeah okay yeah so we'll just jump in and attack the rooks are oh, the queens not done that not come here so if we take then maybe his bishops just gonna take keeping this um, power base of an attempt at the bishop coming through if we take here we're just replicating his rook behind his queen okay right I think just take this rook trading down we can afford to trade down just trying to oh and the rook's taken so we probably should be looking to double up on this um, half open file situation here on this pawn obviously he's going to come and defend his queen is actually on our pawn so do we go for a soft defense queen can't actually come here to attack can't take the pawn I don't think there's anything major do we defend on a white square okay let's do a soft move again just we know what potentially they can do so the attempt then really is for us looking at doubling up on this uh, file with the rooks do we come here with the queen attacking this pawn because it's unprotected at the moment it can only move one space as well so I think the rook maybe comes down to defend rooks don't have any place in the centre of the board really do they? ok let's let's go with this ok so the bishops moved I have to be mad I don't really know what they're doing there um, so the queen can take this queen's not got control of this square just yet so he may win this pawn if this pawn kind of disappears ooh look at that right let's have a look at the whole situation here okay so this is a nice little bit of pattern that they've got going on okay so if we take then if he pushes down if we take then his queen takes our bishop if his queen takes our bishop we can take his bishop and we're on his rook does that see that seems fair doesn't it queen pawn pushes to attack in fact you know what pawn pushes to attack we don't even need to take we take the bishop off the board 
okay right let's go with that oh and the other thing i was looking at was the queen protecting this area so this is why the pawn moves down right yeah okay so once we've taken the pawn here the pawn moves down but he's not going to be fast enough with his rook to then come and get this pawn because we will take the bishop after the pawn moves okay so we'll go with that capture the pawn bishop's doing a merry dance am i getting a am i getting trapped oh controlling this square if we bring the bishop attacking the bishop then the bishop has to do a runner don't it or it actually captures that looks pretty straightforward doesn't it okay let's just bring the bishop and attack the bishop yep so it's gone back it's blocking the king and we need to get in the process of doubling up man come on 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 this pawn um if we bring the bishop here then we're kind of managing this square aren't we and then it gives space for this rook sorry to come and put a two on one here if the rook comes there the queen can take oh hold on hold on before i move so go here what can the opponent potentially do they can do this so if we want to maintain that diagonal we'll have to come here okay right so we'll bring the bishop here it's doing a bit of a dance with the so we could actually bring the bishop here acting as a blocker or continue with the rook putting the two on one on this pawn the rook can't come and defend it has he got some sort of make sure there's no he might be looking to bring his queen somehow I don't see that that's too dynamic but we'll see I'm going to bring the rook here keep it simple looking to attack the pawn um, I think we can look to exchange down can't we just taking I mean the bishop does have this but that's going too fancy just keep it simple if we take with the rook no take with the queen take with the queen look for the queen exchange so they do actually exchange but on their bishop and if we double up are we sending the bishop somewhere nice no just back again maybe so bring the rook here doubling up and we could put pressure onto the bishop obviously it goes here to defend uh, ooh. if we could get this up here and then eventually here once this is put a check on but I suppose he's got a bit of safe, safe grace there okay this might be a material thing that we need to go and grab so he's still managing this square with the bishop so we have to be careful let's maybe push this part and if we do that he comes down and attacks the rook here so we're probably safe for pushing this pawn so push this pawn onto the bishop blocking any shenanigans of him attacking our rook and yep all right um boop, 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 boop. Don't want to overcomplicate it. Could really just come here, couldn't we? And then bring the other rook up. Maybe take this pawn off. Don't want to get too fancy. Putting the check on, he gets away. So, do we just push this pawn in readiness for the bishop putting a check on, and maybe trying to manage that space? I'm going to push the pawn. oh it's seeing everything yeah it's seeing so it's not having any of that so we could push on to this pawn it doesn't have to take I'm going to push on to the pawn bishop's getting a little bit excited so we could pin through onto the rook So pinning the bishop to the rook. 
Mind you, if the pawn takes, then that's a bit of a waste, isn't it? So we could look to elevate the pawn. It's on a white square. Bishop moves to attack something so that it, his rook can get the pawn. Okay, so that, that was pretty straightforward, I think. So we'll. Okay. Right, well, it's not over because these things can be fluffed, but it does look now like they're going to kind of struggle, really. Okay, let's just bring this here. Practice the. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, practice the end. Can he move? He can move. Put a bit of a check on here. And. Uh, Checkmate there. Okay, that was that was a, a bit easier than the first one, but just to satisfy the curiosity, we will go, we'll now go and play a level four. And if level four is more appropriate for us, then we'll stick at the level four type thing. Okay, because we've got to be winning, we've got to be losing, we've got to be getting draws. So that's how we're going to test our skills going forward. All right. If not then obviously we'll come back to level 3 and we've got two wins at the minute so potentially we could get some losses and draws playing at level 3 but we'll see once we've tested out the level 4